Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Um, I'd love to hear if you can all hear me well and see my screen and also where you're coming from. So I can say hello to you guys. And um, just waiting for Yakov to join us also on the line. Great. Hi, Yakov. Hello. Great. I can see some chats coming in. Hi. I've got Daniel from Sweden. You've got Isaac from the third floor. Hi, Isaac. <laughs> Um, Linda, hi Linda, Scott, Howard, great, oh it's great to see all these familiar names, thank you, thank you for joining us. We have a super exciting webinar today about ruling your help desk, a deep dive into a terrorist ticketing system and how it can take your business to the next level. Um, so I'm Yasmin, I'm a technical customer success manager here at Aterra. Um, if you've joined us to webinars before, um, then you might have seen me. And if it's your first time, then welcome. Very, very happy to be here. And Yakov, hi, Yakov. How are you doing? Hi, I'm very excited for my first webinar. It's going to be amazing. Great. I am also excited. Yakov recently joined the team as a junior customer success manager. Um, so we're all really excited and happy that you joined us. And um, we can get started. So we've got a super excited agenda for today. We will be starting off with why do you need a ticketing system, how it can help your business, what are the benefits, why you should use one if you're not using one yet. Uh, leveraging the power of the integrated RMM and PSA, how a Terra can help you and why you should be using the ticketing system within a Terra. We're going to have a demo training session and some pro tips that Yakov is going to share with us. So that would be exciting. And of course, a Q&A at the end of the session. If you have any questions throughout the session or during the Q&A, please submit them in the Q&A section in the webinar and we will get to those at the end. Um, I just want to say quickly that this session is for all different types of customers out there. Um, whether you're currently using a ticketing system, whether if it's a Terra or a different platform, or if you haven't used one yet and you're looking into it. So you are in the right place and I hope this will be beneficial for you. And also um, whether you are an MSP, an IT department or an IT consultant, this could be a good solution, no matter what type of business you are. Um, so we'll jump right in and um, yeah, Exciting, let's get started. Great, um, so I'd love to start off with a quick poll just to see who's joining us on the line here, what type of audience and what you're currently using. Um, so I'd love if you could take a moment to answer, how are you currently communicating with your customers? Um, let's, here we go, Yaki, thank you. Uh, you should see the poll in front of you, if you don't mind quickly answering, whether you have a help desk system currently, if it's a terror or something else, if you're communicating mainly by emails, phone, any instant messaging platforms or other. You can also select multiple answers. So feel free to just let us know what you're using there. Interesting, there's a big distribution. I'll give it another few seconds. I can see quite a lot of you do have a ticketing system. That's great. And still got a lot of emails and phone. Okay, just another five more seconds for last answers to come in. Great. So I think we can end that poll now. I'll share the results with you. Um, we've got a winner, emails. Um, so that's actually great because um, I did want to mention here that communicating with your customers and the customer service that you actually provide is one of the most important things um, in any business, I think, but also in the IT space. And um, I'm actually quite happy that you did select emails because we're going to talk about why emails are not the best solution to manage all of your customers requests and um, issues or any problems and um, why a ticketing system is. Uh, so thank you 
for cooperating there and we can continue. Um, so why do we actually need a ticketing system? So Microsoft did a survey recently and found that 75% of customers actually expect their service providers or their technicians to have visualization into previous issues, tickets, and their history. They expect you to have all the information before going on to the next issue to give a higher level of service. This is actually really hard to do by emails. If you're managing all of your requests and tickets from customers by emails, it's hard to view the history. You have to manually look into it and there's no easy visualization. Um, so how can a ticketing system help us with this? So there are many benefits to ticketing system. The first one is having everything in one centralized place to make sure nothing gets missed. You can prioritize your tickets, your service requests and assign them to the right person. You can also refer to old tickets and alerts to get the full picture and to give your customers the service that they expect and want. You can use a lot of automation tools if you're using a ticketing system to reduce manual actions and to automate as much as possible. Things like automatic ticket creation, if it's from emails, from alerts, um, you can be proactive. So for example, with a tariff and alert comes in, it can automatically generate a ticket. You can start looking into it even before the customer complained. And you can save time by doing quick replies or automation rules, automatic responses out of office, acknowledging that you got the new ticket and that you're starting to work to manage expectations with the customers, auto assign it to technicians, if it's tiers, queues, teams, and get notifications by email, mobile app, whatever you're using. This also allows you to scale and give good customer service. And if we're talking about scalability, it's a good way to grow your business, to be able to save time and resources to take on new customers. It's, as I mentioned, really hard to grow by only using emails. Emails and phone can take up a lot of time and it's also really hard to keep track, view history, and also get some insights on the work that you're actually doing. And also when you bring in new technicians, having everything in one system is great to divide up the work and collaborate between the team. You can set up queues or tiers, as I mentioned, and also different, um, different destinations for your support. Meaning if you wanna set up a sales queue, for example, to divide between your technical issues and requests to prospects that reach in and email you, you can also do that with a ticketing system. I actually had a call with one of our customers, Piero from Digibyte. I don't know if you're on the line, Piero, but if you are then hi and thank you. Um, and he shared with us that he used to get sales inquiries into his main queue and sometimes they'd get lost or they wouldn't answer it in a timely manner. And he did want to differentiate between prospects and new customers to his existing customers. So what he actually did is he set up a different email address that could be, I don't know, info at Digibyte or sales at Digibyte, and then send every ticket or email that goes into that address would go into a separate queue. It can be assigned to a specific person. You could set up a different SLA, anything you'd like to do, but you can use automation to do that. Maintaining a high level of customer service. So as we did say before, um, customer support and how you communicate with the customers is super important to your business. You can be a great technician, have great technical skills, but you have to also be a people's person. You have to communicate well with your customers. You need to show them value. A lot of what we do and what IT businesses do is proactive work. It's not always reactive. It's not just reacting to customers' questions or issues. It's also making sure that all the devices and servers are up to date, patched, software's installed and patched, alerts, as we said before, and looking into them and resolving them, just maintaining a healthy state to the network. So in this way, you can also show them what you've actually been doing because everything is logged and tracked. You can also set up SLA and track SLA to make sure you're standing in the good level of service that you've agreed to. And you can also just, uh, track the time that you've spent on your tickets or specific customers. You can take a look at your technician performance. 
And of course, also keep the customer in the know, as I mentioned, either with automation, automatic responses, acknowledging that the ticket has come in and that you're looking into it. So if you know it's out of hours, if there's anything urgent, you can send the phone number um, and also make sure that every ticket is resolved, answered, and you've given the right explanation. Besides that, we can also gain a lot of business insights, view matrix, generate reports, um, get insights into your profitability and performance. You can easily show the customers the value that you're providing, as I mentioned, either by you know, pulling out reports or scheduling automatic reports. And again, proactive versus reactive. You need to show them the value in both areas. And the last point is streamline your operations. You need to create workflows and processes that work both for you internally, for your team and your technicians, and also for your customers. You need to speak, you should speak to them, make sure that you know, the process works for them, see how they wanna open tickets, how's most convenient for them to reach you and generate good team collaboration within your team. And of course, any other add-ons that the system might have, like billing, reporting, contracts, all that, which we're going to talk about now. So again, these are some of the benefits. They all, you know, go together. And I hope I did convince you why you should be using a ticketing system if you're not yet. And if you are, then maybe just empower that you're doing it and why you're doing it. Um, so we can jump into briefly talking about a Terra. Um, if you are currently using a Terra or you're using something else, we're just going to do a quick overview of the features in a Terra and do a demo. Um, so if you are using a Terra currently to make sure you get the most out of it and use all the features and benefits that we have, the integration between RMM and PSA. And if you're using another system and you're only using a tariff for RMM, maybe we can bring you over to our site. Um, so again, in a tariff, you have RMM and PSA integrated in one powerful tool. Everything you need is that with no extra costs. So it is worth exploring it. Um, I had a call with one of our customers, uh, Stan from Lookout Support Solutions. And Stan said that the technology is already there. It's all about using the system to its advantage and helping clients feel that it's easy and seamless, which I really liked and agreed with. And let's see how we can do that. So with Aterra, um, you can open a ticket in many different ways. We have the Aterra portal, which is the classic way where the technician can manually open up a ticket if you know, it's a task that he's working on or you got an inquiry via phone or instant messaging platform or you're on an on-site visit, you can go ahead and log the ticket, log your work, track the time, make sure that everything is written down and documented. Another way is setting up email forwarding. A lot of customers, your customers or end users, are used to sending all their tickets or issues to a support address. It could be your help desk or main support address or even your technician's private email. You could set up a ticket forwarding rule that every email that gets sent to that address, and it can be multiple address, will, addresses, will automatically be generated into tickets in a Terra, and then you can have the full functionality and then move away from your inbox, which is what we're trying to do here. We also have a customer portal, which you can give access to it, to your customers or your employees. If you're an IT department, they can go in and log and manage their tickets, so they can view all their past tickets, they can create new tickets, and they can also get access to a knowledge base, which is a self-service for them. So you can create procedures or common issues, and maybe you can save some of your time there. We also have a help desk agent that you can enable on all of your managed devices. And once you authenticate that help desk agent, you can use a shortcut or a hotkey that the customer or the user can easily open a new ticket. We also have the chat feature. It's a live chat that can be opened between your technicians and the end user. Both ways, by the way, the technician can initiate the chat and the end user can initiate the chat. And if you need to, you can automatically create a ticket from that chat. You need to further investigate. If 
you want to bill for that chat or if you need to do any further actions. And the last one is alert, which is a great way to see how the RMM and PSA side of things come together. An alert can be generated at any point during the day or during the night. It can automatically open a ticket and then allows you to communicate with your customers, further investigate, see if there's an issue, sort it out, close the ticket, bill, and then continue with your work. I will say that we are planning to integrate Slack and Teams. Um, it is on our roadmap to open tickets from there. So there's a lot more to expect. So I'm just going to quickly go over some of the powerful Terra features, and then I'm going to pass it over to Yakov that he can show it to you. Um, so as we said, automatic ticket creation, many ways to create tickets. And the, I think the best advice would be to talk to your customers, decide what works best for them and for you. If they're used to emails, they can continue using emails, but it all comes into one place on your end, which is the most important thing. And you can decide whether you want to enable the chat, the help desk agent, and give them access to the customer portal. I've actually heard from some customers that start off by using emails. So they forward their emails into a Terra. They start off by doing that. And then once the customers are used to that, or the end users are used to you know, the new system and the new way, introduce the customer portal and teach them and train them how to use that. Um, as I mentioned, opening tickets from alerts helps you be proactive. You can find the issues and solve them before the customer can even complain, which I, I think would be the most amazing thing. And then eventually show them what you did and show them the value. You can streamline your operations and maintain a high level of support with all of the automation tools and rules that we have within the Terra. You can auto assign tickets to queues or to specific technicians with the right qualifications or availability. For example, if you have one technician that specifies in max, so you can search for keywords and set up an automation rule that every new ticket that comes in and it regards max or an issue with the Mac device, it will assign it to that specific tech. And of course, there's so many options there. It's just playing around with it and finding the right solution for you. Um, we also have quick reply templates to save time. It's like macros um, to just try and automate. And we've got snippets that you can automatically populate with data. And if you've got, you know, widespread issue or recurring issues, you can just easily use that to give a fast response and not have to type it out each time. Um, if you're working on the go, if you're on an on-site visit or not in front of the, your desk, you can view and manage your tickets from the mobile app. You can also get notifications about any new ticket or ticket updates. And you can even remote into your managed devices from your phone. So that's another great tool you can use. We do have a billing functionality in Atera. I think it's more relevant for MSPs. Um, I'm not sure that IT departments use the billing part, but if you do, you can make sure not to lose any billable hours. You can track all the time you worked on tickets automatically, by the way, if you have a default contract, it automatically assigns it to every new ticket that comes in to make sure you don't lose any of your time. And you can also bill for products and expenses and easily generate automatic invoice based on your contracts with your customers. We also offer an integration with QuickBooks Online and Xero. We actually had a webinar about this. So if you'd like to learn more, please go and check out the recording. It is available in our blog. We've also got powerful reports. You can be on top of your business at any time with on-demand or scheduled reports, track your text performance, SLAs, customer satisfaction, timesheets, everything. We also have a really nice customer survey that you can send out automatically after every ticket has been resolved. Your customers can fill it out and you can see where you stand and if your customers are satisfied. And for the last thing, we have an API, which you can use to import and export all the data you might need. So it's very easy. We have a lot of information about that in our knowledge base. So if you want to import any previous past tickets from a different system, you can do that there. Wow. OK, that was a lot. Um, I think we're going to jump over into our demo. I will mention again, this will be recorded, so we will send this out to everyone and it will also be available on our website. And if you feel like you need any more training after that, 
we do have the billing webinar, we have the PSA training, you can join a live session or view the recording that's available on our webinars page. And just before we get started, we are having another MSP Minds Live webinar in two weeks about how you can communicate best with your customers. So it's a bit related to what we were talking about today. Um, I'll be there and I hope to see you all there. Yakov, the stage is yours. Thank you, Yasmin. I'm going to share my screen now. Can you see it? Awesome. So thank you, Yasmin, for this amazing introduction. Um, I'm going to tell you what we're going to go over quickly. So we're going to be covering the ways to open a ticket, uh, our ticket views. We're going to cover speaking to a customer on a ticket. Uh, we're going to quickly look at our email settings and how we can set those up. We're going to look at the customer portal. Uh, some ticket automation rules, and we will finish with some reporting. So as Yasmin mentioned, we currently have six ways of opening a ticket through Aptera. This can be done in the tickets view over here. You can open tickets through uh, chat. You can do so through the customer portal, which we will show you later. Uh, tickets can be opened through the hotkey and incoming emails to your unique email address. And we can also open tickets through alerts. Now, alert tickets can be done manually or automatically. And I believe it's a great way to show your customers you're being proactive and you're taking care of issues before they arise. So we're actually gonna go ahead and open a ticket through one of our alerts. So let's go to the warnings. And I see we have here a warning for memory usage that has been generated from a threshold profile. So let's go ahead and create a new ticket. Awesome. Um, over here, you're gonna see we have some fields that are mandatory. So for example, here, I'm gonna select a contact. This is Rhonda. Um, a contract is not mandatory as some of our customers are not MSPs. I know that some IT departments do use contracts for time allocations. Uh, we're gonna choose the retainer one. We have our ticket title automatically populated. You can change that. We have a technician, ticket priority, impact, the type of ticket we're dealing with. And you also have a description that is automatically populated since this is an alert. Uh, you can also add whatever you want or delete this. Um, now you're gonna see while you're creating the tickets, the time is being registered for the creation. We can also uh, cancel that. And Atera also supports the option for scheduling tickets. So for example, if you look at this alert and you wanna defer it, perhaps work on it the next day, you can simply schedule it and this ticket will move to a uh, separate queue. And I also know a lot of our customers like to schedule tickets for reoccurring things like maintenance. And this can also be done through the scheduling. So let's go ahead and create this ticket. Awesome. So we are now on our tickets view. And as you can see, we can create different views and look at different things. And this is a great way to make your work better. Uh, for example, if you want to separate between tier one and tier two technicians, if you want to look at a different sales queue, this can be done through the views. I know some customers like to look at all of their unread tickets in the morning, whatever came in during the evening or during the night. So for example, if you wanna do that, we're gonna go to our unread tickets over here, press go, and we can see all of these are unread. And if you wanna save a view to later work on it, you can simply hit save and you will be able to see it every time you log in. Now, let's go back to our tickets the one we just opened. And after we talked about the ways to open a ticket and our views, I wanna show you what we can see on a ticket and how, how do we speak to a customer. So if you look up here, we have some fields that are relevant to us. We have the technician taking care of the ticket. We have the agent that it, it's assigned to. We have the contract, the retainer one we previously selected. 
And we see this is a memory usage uh, ticket. So you might find yourself adding more memory to your customers or your users computer and you want to charge them for that. This can be added in the products and expenses section over here. If you want to look at all the time entries that you've worked on a ticket, you can also do so here. And if you have tickets uh, you want to merge, it's also very simple and can be done through here in the action center. Great. Um, now, Kov, if I can just mention um, that there's the automatic ticket timer at the top that's running. Right. Um, this can be configured, of course, if you want to have this set up to start automatically when you open a ticket, or if you want to do it manually, or you can also edit and add the time entries as you wish. Um, but it's just a great way to make sure all time is tracked and that you're not missing any hours. Sorry. No worries. Thank you, Yasmin. Um, yeah, so if you'd like to speak to your customer now you're working on the issue and you want to let them know that you've done something, you would simply write uh, your reply and send reply. You can also CC other technicians or relevant parties if you wish to do so. Uh, Atera also supports uh, internal notes. So if you want to remind yourself you've done something or let another technician know uh, what you've done, this can be done here. And we also support quick reply templates. So for example, this is a, an alert for memory usage, but let's say it was a printer issue. You can uh, write uh, a template for printer issues in case you know there's some, something going on and it automatically populates the fields and let the customer or the user know that you know all of your printers are down and it's going to be taken care of and up and running by a certain time. And this is a really a great way to save some time and make your processes more automatic and faster. Um, to the right here, uh, you can see the other tickets that are open or resolved by the same person. And also, this is a great way to sort of see what the user is dealing with and uh, be aware of that and sort of look at their history. Uh, great. Let's say the ticket is solved. We did everything we wanted to do. To close it, you would simply change the ticket status to close. And then we're going to update it here. And our ticket is closed. Uh, perhaps you want to bill it now if it's a billable ticket, depending on the contract. This can be done in the billing section. And as Yasmin mentioned, we have a full webinar covering our billing abilities and our integrations uh, with QuickBooks and Xero. Awesome. Yeah, Bob, if I can just jump in here and give another suggestion. Um, you can also use the resolved and closed statuses in the ticket. For example, if you want to mark a ticket as resolved and not close it, you can ask your technicians to just remark them as solved and then have the manager go over, just review that everything is in order, that all the time is tracked correctly and only then move it to closed and build the ticket. Thank you. Thank you, Yasmin. Uh, and I'm just going to ask everyone to please submit the questions to the Q&A section. I can see you're asking quite a few questions in the chat. We will get to them at the end, but please in the Q&A. Thank you. Awesome. So we looked at the ways to open a ticket. Uh, we looked at our views and how to speak to a customer. And the next thing I want to show you is setting up our email settings. So I'm going to go to the admin panel over here and to our email settings. Now, when you open your Atera account, you are provided with a unique email address. And every email sent to this address is going to automatically generate a ticket on the Atera platform. Um, here, you would put in your primary customer support address and also the reply. You're going to have to set up a forwarding on your email. And we recommend customizing your SMTP settings. That way, your emails don't come out of no reply at atera.com. Yeah, I can see some questions are coming in about this. Um, so you can basically add your 
support email address here. You can add um, if you go up. It depends on the difference here. I think the pro tier, you can add up to five support addresses. With the growth, it's 10 and the power is unlimited. So you can add your help desk or support address here, even your technician email address can be here. You have to set a forwarding rule on the inbox side too. And then every email that will be sent to support at yourcompanyname.com will automatically create a ticket within a Terra. You can add multiple addresses here and you can also add your customized SMTP server for the reply address. If you don't do this, it will still work, just that the replies and the automatic responses for the tickets will come from no reply at terra.com. And if you add your SMTP settings here, you can set your primary address that you added at the top here to be the reply from address, basically. You don't have to actively forward your emails to this address that was provided. You can just set an automatic rule and it will do that automatically. Great. Um, another great feature we have is the ability to auto create new contacts on every incoming email. So say uh, John at Atera has sent you an email and he is not a customer on your Atera platform yet. This is going to create a new contact for him. And you can also choose to send him an email automatically. Now we recommend sending them the customer portal credentials. If this is a way you would like to work with, and this uh, John is going to receive his credentials. And next time he wants to open a ticket, he will do so through the customer portal. Um, I would recommend doing this when you have unique domains. If all of your users are using Gmail, for example, all of your new contacts are going to go to one place and it's actually going to make uh, your work a little harder. So that is something to look into. Um, great. So we talked about the email settings. The next thing I want to show you is the customer portal. So we're going to go over here and we can look at the customer portal. I logged in as Lynn at Four Dogs and she is my main person of contact. So Lynn is able to see all of the organization's tickets, the ones that are open, the ones that are resolved. You can see also a ticket from Jamie. If Jamie was to log in, he would only see his tickets. Um, and through the customer portal, your end users can add their own tickets and also have access to a knowledge base, which you can build and actually make your life easier by letting your users self-serve and look into articles that might help them instead of turning to you for more help. Awesome. We talked about the... Yeah. Sorry, Yakov. Um, yeah, so I was just going to say for people that maybe haven't seen this before, the customer portal address is available under admin. If you go to Terra admin, you'll see the address there. Well, yeah, if you can share, that'll be great. Perfect. Um, we, you actually get a unique URL, but you can change it and you can also um, add an SSL certificate so it's secure and they can log in with HTTPS. And um, every contact in the system will have their unique login details, which you can send out automatically, like Jakob suggested, with an email template. So they will each get a username and password, which you can manage inside the Atera platform in case they forget their password and you need to reset it, which I'm sure that probably happened or will happen to some of you at some point. Um, they can also do it on their end, but, you know, just so you have the possibility. Um, and then they, if they access this URL and they enter their credentials, they can manage and open tickets. And as Yakov mentioned, he logged in with Lynn's account, which is one of the contacts under a customer in the platform. And she was set to be a main contact. And then you can also choose to allow main contacts to have the view of all tickets from that organization. So if you're managing a specific customer and you have someone that knows a bit about IT there and you want him to see all the tickets or you know the manager that's paying for the service and he wants to see everything so he can also gain access to that through the customer portal. Awesome, thank you, Yasmin. Um, the next thing I wanna show you after the customer portal is some ticket automation. Uh, we're going to access them through the admin panel as well. They are up here. Now, ticket automation rules are a great way to automate your work 
make it simpler, uh, save yourself some time and just be more efficient. Um, and I wanna practice and actually create one of those rules. So let's try and create a rule for tickets being created outside of our office hours. And I think the purpose of this would be to acknowledge that you received a ticket, uh, you're aware of it, and you're going to work on it tomorrow in your business hours. You can also give the customers your phone number, and if this is an emergency, they can call you or whatever. It depends on the template you create. So let's go ahead and create a new rule. Let's call it uh, 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 business hours. Glad I got to spell this word correctly. Um, the event is what triggers our rule. So for us, we would want this to work when a new ticket is created. We wanna check uh, when it was created. I'm gonna go ahead and ignore the flow. So meaning I want this rule to work regardless of the queue of automation rules we created. And I'm gonna set it as active. So we added the rule, there it is. Now for every uh, automation rules, we have conditions and we have actions. So for this rule, we're actually gonna have two conditions. The first one is we want the event trigger time, meaning when the ticket was opened to not be on our business hour calendars. But we also set up a threshold profile before and we have tickets coming in from our alerts automatically. So we want to have another condition that the source of this ticket is not through, through an alert. We only want the tickets that the customers or the end users opened to trigger this rule. Um, and then we want to add an action. So the action we want is actually to email our contact and let him know about our after hours. Great, this rule is up and running and we can move on. Um, some more interesting ticket automation rules you can do is auto assigning tickets to technicians based on keywords. So as Yasmin mentioned, if one of your technicians specializes in something, you can look at the ticket title and automatically send it to one of your techs. You can also set up uh, a sales queue based on the destination email. So mails that were sent to sales at are gonna go to a separate uh, view on your tickets view. You can also send emails to your techs once they get a new ticket incoming in and sort of notify them by mail if you wish to. And another great thing you can do for Atera is send an automatic survey whenever you close one of your tickets uh, to sort of track uh, your customer's satisfaction. Awesome. So after speaking about ticket automation rules, uh, the last thing I wanna to touch upon today is our reporting abilities. And the first report I wanna show you is actually our ticket, our customer satisfaction report it can be found here uh, since we spoke about the survey. So for this report, uh, I think it's a great way to sort of show, see how you're doing first in front of uh, your clients and also as a tool for showing your reputation and how happy your customers are. So for this report, you can select a time period. We can do the last two months and a number of items and we can generate it. If you wish, you can also schedule reports and receive them on the Atera platform or via email at whatever frequency you want. So let's go ahead and generate this. And you can see, uh, we don't have that many tickets here, but you can see um, the report is broken down by customers. You can look at the tickets and sort of the average rating of all of them. Um, and you can also see it on the ticket side. Broken yeah, down. I gave you a five, five star. Yes, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, yeah, awesome. The next report I wanna show you is our SLA report, the service level agreements. You can be found over here. And also a great report to sort of show your reputation, see how you're doing, 
show the level of services you're able to provide. Let's look at the last two months again. Look at all of our customers. And you can see that actually in the last two months, we've answered 20 free tickets, not so much, uh, which make up, uh, we responded to 13%. Um, and there are some more matrix. You can also see how you're doing within your SLA, if you've exceeded it and by how much. This is broken down to your first response and the amount of time it took you to close the ticket. And the last report I wanna show you for today, also in the reports section, is our timesheet report. It can be found here, let's access it. Um, you can filter by the ticket resolve date or the time entry, let's do it by the resolve date. Again, I wanna look at the last two months. Um, I think I would look at all the technicians, all of our customers and contacts, contracts for now. And I wanna look at the rates, um, display all the tickets, and I wanna round out the billing. So the timesheet report is a great way to track your billable hours and sort of see how you're doing in front of all of your tickets. So you can look if they were resolved, if they're billable, and if you actually invoice them, uh, down here, you can see um, the revenue you are supposed to get from each one of them. And I think it's another great tool. We currently have it at Terra. And I think that's it for the demo for today. Thank you. Wow, thank you. Um, we covered quite a bit and um, I'm sure you'll have some questions. And again, if there's anything you still need and any help or any questions, our support team is available, success at terra.com. You can email them. You can also start a live chat that's available Monday to Friday, 24 hours a day. We also have an extensive knowledge base, um, basically covers everything. So if you haven't checked that out, I suggest you do. And of course, training webinars that are recorded, videos, the Terra Academy, and that's all available to you. So we're going to jump into the live q and I already saw there were some questions about how to add the SSL certificate for the customer portal. Um, so basically, currently you can do it now for subdomains of Aterra. So Yaki, if you don't mind going back to the, um, uh, the customer portal page again. So under admin customer portal. Yeah. Oh, you mean the uh, Yeah, that's fine too, any one of those. Okay. So you can set any uh, subdomain, so you can write your business name, but it would be .com and email our support team and they could fix that up for you to have the SSL certificate. We are working on making it um, HTTPS for every subdomain. It is in our pipeline, so that is coming, but it's a good solution for now that you can start using. So I hope that helps. Um, great, so I'm just going to open the Q&A now and we can start answering your questions. Um, so Ryan, I can see that you asked, is it possible to have your email and your support at email address automatically set up to create tickets in a Terra? But clients always email you directly and what is the best practice here? So as we showed, you can set up multiple email addresses to forward the emails into a Terra. If you don't want to send all of your emails into a ticket, you can set up an automation rule and exclude or include um, certain source addresses or keywords or, you know, the subject line, anything you'd like, or you can also forward your emails that you do want to create tickets into your support address or the generated email address in a Terra. If you don't set up any automation rules, it will just forward all the emails from your inbox. But I would advise checking out the automation rules, ticket automation rules, and see if there's anything you can use there to you know, pick up certain keywords and only forward those emails to tickets. And um, Yakov, we're getting some thanks for the demo, so I'm glad you all enjoyed that. Thank you. Right. Um, I can see a question about any desks. Would it work in the Atera app? Um, that's a good question. Um, I'd have to check with our product team if that's planned. 
but we just rolled out any desk to beta. It's planned to go out to production and then we're gonna add more capabilities to it as we get on. But if you wanna know, you can email us to success at terror.com and we can check and get back to you. Um, Klaus is asking if there are any plans to implement customizable reports. So that is a great question because there are, we are looking into integrating a tool to build your own reports. It's planned in our roadmap for this year. Um, so I hope that will come very soon. Jason is asking if the Atera billing integrates with Omni Accounting. So currently we integrate with QuickBooks Online and Xero as a native integration, full integration that exports the invoices directly into those systems. We are looking into adding more integration. So I would suggest submitting that to our features board. And you can also export the invoices and import them into a different system. So you can try that out. Christopher, you're asking about a product management integration. And um, we are looking into it, but I'd love to hear exactly what you're looking for. So you can either write that and submit it to our features board or email us success at terror.com with your request and what you'd like to see. And we'd be happy to forward that internally. Um, uh, fine, you're asking if you resolve a ticket, does it mean it's not closed? It is closed, but you can set up different automation rules to differentiate between resolved and closed. And it's also a good way for managers to review them and then set them to closed, but it will be closed. I can see that Don asked, where is the setting to auto start the timer on opening a ticket? Um, those can be on admin settings and then tickets you can uh, configure the timer over there. Yes. Um, Scott, I can see you asked the same question about resolved and closed. No, you can leave them as resolved. It's just another tool that you can use for your convenience and for creating more workflows. Don't worry. <laughs> I hope I didn't scare you there. Um, Bernard, you're asking, um, how to create a rule to not send an email to a customer by creating a maintenance ticket by your technicians. So um, under the ticket automation rules, you can decide if you wanna send an email to a customer, to a contact, and you can also exclude certain cases. I think you're referring to a new ticket that was created and you don't wanna email the customer for that ticket. Um, I'm not sure. Um, you can add an internal note, but for the initial creation, that's really interesting. Uh, if you could email us, I'd be happy to look into that further. Um, but it's not really what it's meant for. Um, I'm guessing you want to log some tickets. Um, you could create it on an internal contact. Just create like an extra contact on the customer and assign that to the ticket to make sure you don't lose any billing hours and then it won't send out an email to any of the contacts under that customer. So that could be a workaround. Um, so Justin, can you set different support emails for different customers and then automatically assign those tickets to designated technicians? Yes, you can. Um, so you can set up different email addresses and then based on the email address that it was sent to, assign it to their technicians. So you can do that in the ticket automation rules. Mm -hmm. Sam, you're asking, can you set up rules to delete recurring spam tickets, for example, from a newsletter? Then yes, you can do it based on automatic um, keywords. You can, if you've got something that's spamming you regularly, you could just set those tickets to automatically close. Um, 
are a lot of questions, sorry. I see a question about can starting a remote control session trigger ticket creation? Currently, no, but that's a great suggestion. If you could submit that to our features board, we'd be happy to look into that. Daniel asked, is there currently a way to see the history of a ticket? Yes, once you access the ticket and you scroll down, you can see the history uh, and everything that was co in correspondence. Yeah. Ryan's asking, is it possible to have a trigger word in your email reply that can close a ticket in a terror? Um, not sure what you mean there if you're replying to the ticket from your email. Um, so if you reply via email, it, it won't log it in as Terra. You'd have to reply from within the ticket. Eagle is asking to add a checklist to a ticket. That is also a feature request. So I'd love it if you could submit that to our features board. But it's a great idea. And Michael's asking, can you create snippets to pull from custom fields for your emails? Um, yes, you can. And um, we have many snippet options within the email template and the quick reply templates, which you can use either within the ticket or in the ticket automation rules. Um, Chantal's asking, can you print a ticket in hours related? So you can use our API um, to extract and export all the ticket information. And we've also got the timesheet report that you can pull out and invoices that will include all the information about the tickets, hours, rates, everything. Oh, by the way, um, so you can set up uh, ticket queues by creating custom fields. We actually have a knowledge base article about that because um, I can see some questions about assigning tickets to more than one technician and setting up queues. So we do have a solution for that. Um, I'll make sure to attach it to the recap of this webinar. But if you go into our knowledge base, you can just search for queues and it will show you how to do that. It's a step-by-step -step guide, so that could be helpful. And um, regarding assigning more than one technician to a ticket, so currently no, and we've actually looked into this because we have seen some requests and it's not really the classic layout of ticketing systems. You usually only have one technician assigned. It's also the same way in Zendesk, but you can CC technicians or contacts to tickets. And you can also you know, assign and reassign if you're moving it between tiers. We have a few more minutes left to just answer any final questions. If you still have questions that weren't answered, um, I suggest you reach out to our support team and uh, they'll be happy to help. And again, check out all of our resources. I'm sure they can be helpful too. Um, train, any plans to expand the customization of the customer portal? Yes, it is planned. Um, we've got a lot of exciting things coming. Um, one of them is the new UI that we're planning to roll out to beta within the next few weeks and then to production after that. And by the way, if anyone wants to check it out and join our beta group, please email us support. We'll be happy to move you to beta to get early access to new features and the new UI that's coming very soon. Train, nice. Yes. So email us. Happy to add you. It's um, great for us also to get feedback from you. Um, so please join, that'll be good. Sorry, Echo. No worries. Uh, Jason was asking, is it possible to import clients uh, from another system? What format will the file need to be? So you can actually import a CSV uh, to your contacts uh, through Etera. Sean, I can see you're asking about PCI compliance check for agents. Um, so actually we don't store any credit card information. So we are not looking into doing the PCI compliance, um, but I'm not exactly sure what you wanna do with that. 
um, to check the client's agent. So if you could just email us and tell us exactly what you want to see that that could be interesting. And I will mention we are planning to do a SOC 2 and ISO 2027,000. And that's also in the plans in our roadmap. Um, I, was, I see a question about time-based ticket automation rules um, from Anonymous. So we are planning to add this, it is in our roadmap. Um, so yeah, coming soon, hopefully. Um, Jonathan's asking, is a signing machine per ticket being looked into? I'm not sure because we you can add a device or agent to a ticket and it's also automatically assigned when a contact opens the ticket through the customer portal or if you open the ticket via alert. So I'm not sure I understood the question here, but feel, feel free to reach out to us if you still are left unanswered. Um, okay. Um, Danny is asking, uh, do we have any videos on how the end user can submit a ticket? So we have a lot of videos in the Atari Academy and we also have a YouTube and Vimeo channel. Um, so basically, as we mentioned earlier, the end user can either open a ticket by emailing your support address and they can also get access to the customer portal which we showed earlier and they can also open a ticket via the help desk agent so if you enable the help desk agent on the device they can right click it and access the customer portal create a ticket and start a live chat session um Acar's asking, is it possible to integrate live chat with Atari? Yes, we actually do have a live chat that's already in the system. It's available for the growth and power plans. Um, it's, it's a great feature. Try it out. Mario, you want to create tickets without con contacts? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I understand if you're in an IT department um, that might be something you'd need that is a request that I've heard and we are looking into it um, I will say that we are planning to create a different view for IT departments bit of a spoiler alert I don't know if I'm allowed to say that um, but it's a sneak peek um, so we are planning to change a bit of the views and functionality so that's definitely something we'll look into doing that but you can create an internal contact if you don't want to message one of your contacts under your customers. So that's a workaround you can do now. Um, okay, two more minutes. So I think I'm gonna take one or more, one or two last questions. Um, yes, Damien, there will be a recording later. We will send you an email with the recording and it will also be available on our blog with a recap. trying to pick a good one to end with the blast. <laughs> Jeff, we currently don't have sub tickets, um, but that's also a feature request that could be a great idea. We are constantly working on adding more features. So please submit that to our features board. And I saw a question about the features board. So if you go to your Atari account on top right corner, you open it and you'll have a features board link there. And it's a great way to see what we're working on, what we're considering, upvoting and suggesting new features. Um, Sam, the views are per technician. So you can set up different views there. Thank you, Train, for the kind words. Um, okay, last question. 
Um, Dirk, can you sign a ticket to a customer, not just to a contact? So contact basically is under customer. The customer is a group of contacts. Um, so you would need to sign it to a contact. If you don't want to or don't um, have one, you can just create a, an internal contact under that customer so it doesn't notify anyone. And Mark, you can export data via the API if you need to. Okay, I mean, there's still a lot of unanswered questions. Um, I'm really surprised and overwhelmed, but it's great. Um, I'm, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was beneficial for you. And any questions that are left, please reach out to our support team. You can jump on a live chat session or open a ticket um, and they'll be happy to help. We will send out the recording. I had a blast, Yakov. I hope you enjoyed. I did too. I did too. And everyone on the line, thank you again for joining us. It was great seeing you. And um, hopefully see you soon in our next webinar, MSP Minds Live in two weeks. And um, have a wonderful day from wherever you are in the world. Thank you again. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye.